Hi, my name is Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist and I run a business that enables me to bring knowledge and learning to everyone, not just those who are at universities, colleges or schools. And I do this by producing a range of blogs, vlogs and free online courses. But I do also run some slightly more in-depth courses, both online and face-to-face. -face. You don't need any previous qualifications to learn with me and there are several subjects available. So once you finish watching this video, head on over to my website. The details are in the video description below and see if you can make it to an event or learn online. This particular video is looking at Richard Huckle. He's a British man who raped and abused thousands of children, mostly in Malaysia. Some of you at this point may be wondering what it says on my t-shirt and I did wear this t-shirt especially for today and it says you inspire my inner serial killer because this piece of work absolutely does inspire my inner serial killer. I've had a really emotional week researching this one because of the horrific nature of some of his crimes. Richard Huckle is one sick individual. I always do my best to keep my own emotion and opinion out of these videos, but this was a tough one. Huckle was convicted of 71 counts of serious sexual assault against children whilst posing as a teacher, photographer and a Christian in Malaysia. That's not to say that he only committed that many. Authorities were able to find evidence for 91 incidents, all of which Huckle initially denied. He was eventually convicted for 71 of those offences. However, it's estimated that he had around 200 victims, possibly even more. My initial thoughts on any child sexual abuse and paedophiles are of anger and disgust. I couldn't possibly ever imagine somebody being sexually aroused by a child. As a mother, I'm immediately drawn to wanting to protect and nurture children. I haven't covered a paedophile in any great detail before. As a researcher, I'm usually able to switch off my own emotions and personal opinions when it comes to examining offences. That's not to say that I don't empathise with the victims of the crime or condone what these criminals have done, but it means that I'm not clouded by emotion and can focus on the behaviour aspects of a case. However, with rape and crimes against children, I can't help it. So this has been a very challenging case to research. My first thought was to investigate what the research community knows about the psychology of paedophiles. Not all paedophiles are child sex offenders and not all child sex offenders are paedophiles. Paedophiles are defined as individuals who preferentially or are solely attracted sexually to prepubescent children, generally 13 years or less. A person can be a paedophile and sexually attracted to children without ever acting on those urges. It's common for those who sexually abuse children to be labelled a paedophile but that's not always strictly correct. Some people who sexually abuse children are not sexually attracted to the children at all. Sometimes the sexual abuse of a child occurs more because of the opportunity presenting itself and can be more about power, control and domination rather than sexual satisfaction. Some paedophiles don't even realise what they're doing is wrong. They genuinely believe that they're showing the children love. I agree that this is a difficult thing to comprehend and is a very shocking statement to those of us who are not sexually attracted to children. In one research paper, an interview with a self-confessed paedophile revealed that he understood that society deems what he did was wrong, but he can't understand why that's the case. Some people who've been sexually abused as children will go on to become offenders. Studies suggest that anywhere between 33% and 75% of child sex offenders report being sexually abused as children. However, being a victim of a child sex offence doesn't mean that that person is more likely to go on to become an offender. 
Not all victims will go on to become sex offenders and not all sex offenders have been abused. Research suggests that there may be a biological reason for paedophilia. Data published in a recent research article found that paedophiles' brains are, in essence, wired to find the immature faces of children attractive. Human faces can motivate nurturing behaviour or sexual behaviour when an adult sees a child or an adult face, respectively. This suggests that face processing is tuned to detect the age cues or sexual maturity to stimulate the appropriate reproductive behaviour, either caretaking or mating. In paedophilia, sexual attraction is directed to sexually immature children. In individuals who are attracted to adults, adult faces activated several brain regions significantly more than child faces. The same regions were activated in paedophiles, but with a reversed preferential response pattern. Armed with that knowledge, I came to the conclusion that Richard Huckle isn't a paedophile, but is a child sex offender. I believe that his abuse was more about power, control and domination than sexual satisfaction. Huckle was born into a middle class family in Ashford in Kent in 1986. He was educated at a grammar school where people described him as being a bit of a loner but nothing out of the ordinary. Huckle was a regular worshipper at church where he was described as a quiet man. After leaving education, Huckle spent a gap year in Malaysia from 2005 to 2006. He returned regularly, helping out at local churches and among local communities. His reign of abuse began in 2006 and continued for eight or nine years after that. Huckle was initially charged with 91 counts, and these included creation and possession of child pornography, rape of a child under the age of 12, digital penetration, child abuse, facilitating the commission of child sexual offences by creating a paedophile manual. At an initial hearing at the Old Bailey in January of 2016, Huckle pleaded not guilty to all 91 charges. Prosecutors started to prepare three separate trials because they didn't believe that one jury should be subjected to all of the graphic evidence that would be presented in a single trial. During the pre preliminary trial hearing, Huckle pleaded guilty to 71 of the 91 charges. As a result of his confession, prosecutors decided not to pursue a prosecution against the remaining 20 charges and asked that they were left to lie on the file to spare a jury from having to watch graphic images and videos of child abuse. The 71 he said that he was guilty of was enough to ensure that he received a very lengthy sentence. Therefore, the remaining charges were kept on file. The charges included rape of children under the age of 12, possessing and distribution of child pornography, creation of child pornography, child abuse, and creating, as I said, a paedophile manual which was entitled Paedophiles and Poverty, a Child Lover Guide. The charges also included digital penetration of a child under the age of 12 and raising money for his activities via a crowdfunding website. His victims ranged in age from six months to 12 years old. One was abused while wearing a nappy and another was abused for a number of years between the ages of five and 12. Huckle was part of a website on the dark web called The Love Zone. This was a place that paedophiles exchanged pictures and videos. On the site, he shared photos of his crimes with the other members. He boasted about his crimes to the other paedophiles, posting comments such as, hit the jackpot, a three-year-old girl as loyal to me as a dog, and nobody seemed to care. He also wrote, impoverished children are definitely much easier to seduce than middle-class kids. In a series of postings in 2013, he admitted sexually abusing four girls from the same family. 
he awarded himself points for sexually abusing the children and he couldn't win points if he abused the same children in the same week. He wrote that he wanted to marry a girl that he'd raped from the age of seven and have children with her, although he claimed that he wasn't a big fan of incest. Richard Huckle had gone from a quiet middle class boy from a nice family. I believe that it's likely that he stumbled across the opportunity to abuse children and sell the images and videos on the dark web. He discovered that instead of being the quiet person that nobody noticed to being revered and held in high regard by a whole community of paedophiles. Huckle's behaviour reveals that he's not necessarily sexually excited by the children but by the attention and the feelings of power and dominance that that gave him. He wrote a sick paedophile manual as I said, called Paedophiles and Poverty, A Child Lover's Guide. He sold his pictures and videos online in exchange for bitcoins. He wrote on the website, as I said, that he'd hit the jackpot of a three-year-old girl being as loyal to him as his dog and how children from these poorer communities in places like Malaysia were much, much easier for him to groom. In my opinion, he wasn't doing this for sexual satisfaction or because he liked it. He was doing it because others liked it and gave him praise and attention for the content that he was posting. I believe that Huckle liked the attention and status that this gave him. He was good at it and he excelled at it. It may have been the first time that he was ever good at something, giving him the drive to continue with that offending behaviour. During his pre-trial hearing, he even asked one of the videos entered as evidence to be played back in court. The only possible explanation that I could think of for this is because he could. He did it because he could. The only reason he was caught was because the National Crime Agency and other authorities from around the world had infiltrated the website and had assumed the identity of the person that ran it in order to catch more paedophiles. He initially denied all of the charges at first. The police seized his laptop but they were only able to access a very small part of it because it was so heavily encrypted. He only admitted the 71 charges after drunkenly admitting to his mother that he was guilty. My heart absolutely goes out to this woman. Her son said that he did commit these offences and she felt that she had no option but to throw him out and report it to the police. She would have had to deal with the conflicting emotions of being a mum wanting to protect him and the disgust of knowing what he did. Doing the right thing straight away shows her high moral standards. This was not a man who'd came from a questionable upbringing. At his sentence hearing, his lawyer read out a personal statement from him and that read... I really understand and acknowledge the true scale and damage it caused to the Malaysian community. I hoped to escape this mundane life of solitude in the UK, yet was overwhelmed by the attention I received in Malaysia. I completely misjudged the affections that I received from these children. My low self-esteem and lack of confidence with women was no excuse for me to use these children as an outlet. I'm open and eager to rehabilitate from this offending behaviour. I don't want to become a martyr to sex tourism in Malaysia. This was all my doing as a consequence of my immaturity and I'm truly remorseful. I don't often swear on videos that I do, but that is absolute bullshit. The vast majority of child abuse on his laptop was never recovered and he refused to help the police to retrieve the encrypted data. If he were truly remorseful, he would have allowed the access to the encrypted information. That would have allowed victims to have been identified and given the appropriate support. Even more abuse was uncovered by a BBC journalist and aired in a programme on BBC Three. 
It's common for offenders to select victims that are more vulnerable. Within the Malaysian community, Huckle certainly found that. He volunteered in schools, churches and claimed to be a devout Christian. In poorer Malaysian communities, being seen with a white man was good and it improved your social status. One young girl who was being interviewed by a female journalist told her that a, as a young child, she told her father about the abuse that Huckle was inflicting and was told to be quiet. Brona Munro, the journalist who discovered Huckle's written diaries, said that Huckle had a grooming strategy of taking photos of children on the beach and then offering them the prints of these photos to gain their trust. Then he offered them English lessons. She shows how the poorer communities are very reluctant to report child abuse in Malaysia or admit that it even happened. Huckle knew this and he targeted these communities because of it. He is a predator. He doesn't appear to show any empathy for his victims. It's almost as though it's a game to him. A game to see whose trust he can gain and get access to their children. Huckle also abused children in Cambodia. Poor children are readily accessible there and it's, well, it's a well-known hotspot for sex tourism. He'd target children in the slums. He also travelled to India, often volunteering in churches and orphanages. These children were not seen as human beings by Huckle. It was a game to him. He enjoyed the thrill of the chase. He catalogued it all on the dark web for other paedophiles to enjoy. He would award himself pedo points for each child and each abusive behaviour or rape. He gave himself a rule to follow or several rules to follow as a challenge, such as not raping the same child twice in a day. He gave himself 15 points per rape and in one week gained as many as 1,300 points. He was enjoying keeping notes and showing off his skills on the website. It was a skill that he was proud of. He would have carried on for years if he hadn't been caught. He himself felt invincible because of the nature of the offences in these poorer countries. He was obviously very good at using encryption on his own computer and only operating on the dark web, which is largely untraceable and relatively easy to access. He's a very dangerous, arrogant predator who took what he wanted from these children. He was sentenced to 22 life sentences with a minimum term of 22 years. Because of his age at sentencing, this would have meant that he was eligible for parole when he was in his mid-50s. On the 13th of October 2019, Huckle was found strangled and stabbed to death in his cell. Another prisoner named Paul Fitzgerald was charged with his murder in January 2020. Do join me next week for a psychological analysis of Fitzgerald. I do hope that you've not been distressed by any of the information that I've included on this video. I have put some support websites in the video description below. I hope that you've learned something from this psychological analysis of Richard Huckle. There are numerous websites about his offences where you can read more about the details of his crimes. I didn't include them here because I wanted to keep to the psychological aspects of his, his offending, which the main theme of it was power, control, dominance and enjoying being good at something. Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Bye for now.